Hello, love. Today we're going to be talking about bacterial metabolism part two. So, we've already talked about the autotrophs, which are the photosynthetic and the chemotrophic bacteria. Today we're going to be talking about heterotrophs, how we have to take in sugars before we can break them down into high energy molecules. Now, there are two types of heterotrophs that we're going to be talking about. Parasitic, which are going to live off of human, or sorry, excuse me, living organisms, such as humans, or saprophytic, or saprophytes, which live off of dead organisms. So, energy generating patterns. We take our sugars that we bring in and we must break them down and get that energy and put them into high energy molecules. So, sugars are our energy of life to create the high energy molecules. ATP, NADPH, NADH, or FADH. Remember, when these are broken, the energy is released. So, Breaking down of sugars, remember, is catabolism, breaking and releasing of energy. There are three ways to do that. We are going to talk about the first two today, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Fermentation and other things will be in part three. Aerobic respiration is the most efficient and to actually get energy from glucose. So we go through three processes, glycolysis, which is the breaking of glucose, glucose, Glycoglucose, like this breaking. We got the Krebs cycle, and then we have our handy dandy electron transport chain. We've seen this electron transport chain before. Remember when the electrons got excited and then bounced around from electron acceptors? And every time they did, they pumped out hydrogen, and the hydrogen could come back in? Well, we will see that again in aerobic respiration. So, glycolysis can be done in several ways, but I want you to know this most common way down here at the bottom. So glucose is broken down into pyruvic acid, then two high energy molecules, NADH and ATP. Those are then used for the Krebs cycle. So during the Krebs cycle, pyruvate and then some other molecules are used to create carbon, which can be used in carbon fixation, or can be used to make macromolecules, and two other where's my macro? There is two other high energy molecules. NADH and FADH. We can also get some ATP, but we have to go through a middleman. This middleman is going to be GTP, or guanine triphosphate. So, he is holding a phosphate, and he just waits around until an ATP floats by. And he says, Sir, would you mind taking one of these phosphates? You can use it. You can use it more than I can. And the ADP says, Why, thank you, sir and turns into ATP. So, the GTP gives up a phosphate and creates, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? ATP and then GDP. Now, GDP can go back here and pick up another phosphate and become GTP again. Now, if the GTP does not happen to find an ADP, it can be used in photosynthesis, or sorry, excuse me, protein synthesis, or gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis. Gluco meaning glucose, neo meaning new, genesis means to create. Take a moment and think of a definition. Did you come up with the creation of new glucose? Well, if you didn't, there you go. So, next we have our electron transport chain. And for every Four, that's supposed to be a D, uh, N right there. So every four N A D H, we get 12 ATP. For every one F A D H, we get two ATP. Then we have glycolysis. The overall equation, you must know this guy, you must know the overall equation. Glucose plus oxygen, which means it's going to be aerobic, will give us carbon dioxide, water, and 38 ATP. 38! I know! From what? But where do they come from? Well, let's find out. So, we have, we're looking at this side today. Next time we'll look at fermentation. Glycolysis goes into pyruvic acid. The pyruvic acid goes into acetyl CoA. Yes, you need to know from pyruvic acid to acetyl CoA. Then into the Krebs cycle. And then what is created in the Krebs cycle goes through our electron transport chain to the oxygen, because we're talking about aerobic respiration right now, to the oxygen. Well, what does this do? 
We get lots of NADH from glycolysis, from the creation of acetyl-CoA, NADH. Lots more NADH from the Krebs cycle, plus two FADHs. All of these suckers go down in here to the electron transport chain, which are bounced around. And then the electron is given to the oxygen to create water. Now, guys, glycolysis creates two ATP. Krebs cycle creates two ATP. And the electron transport chain, 34 ATP. 34! That's a lot. So, you do need to know that in aerobic respiration, the electron transport chain creates the most ATP to create our 34, 38 ATP. So, remember in the electron transport chain how this works. The electron is excited and bounces around, and every time it bounces around, those molecules send out hydrogen to create a high concentration of hydrogen, which is going to have a plus sign, which we'll see in a moment. And inside is going to be a low concentration of hydrogen. High, low. That is called a gradient, and it wants to equalize. So the ones in the higher want to get to the lower. So what do they do? The hydrogens go through ATPA, which turn it. And for three hydrogens, we give enough energy to take one ADP and add a phosphate to create ATP. So this is just an elongated version. You do not need to know these guys. But again, showing the electron gets excited and goes and bounces from one thing to the other. And every time it bounces, H's are pumped out. H's are pumped out. H's are pumped out. Then it gets tired, and now it's just going to ride back over here and be used for oxygen to create water. Again, we have a high, coin, high concentration of H's out here, which can then be pumped back in to create ATP. Okay. Generation of... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Generation of a proton motive fault. Now, guys, you know what this is. You just don't know it by this name. Every time I say pumping out of hydrogen, pumping out of hydrogen, that is creating a proton motor force. Because like I said, whoops, excuse me, every hydrogen has a plus sign, which if you remember, protons are positive. And every time the hydrogen is pumped out, it creates more pluses out here, or more protons. And that makes the inside negative and the outside positive. Well, we want to stabilize that. So then the positives want to come back inside to make an equilibrium, and that's where we get to the ATP generation. If you want to see a good animation of this, please go to this website right here. It is a fabulous, fabulous animation that you click through that describes the proton motor force. ATP synthase. Now this is an up close and personal look at what the ATP actually is. Yes, it is all these different pieces. And yes, it does look like a balloon. And every time hydrogen comes through, this guy turns. And for every three, it turns and it creates enough energy to take ADP plus a phosphate and create ATP. So, overall, aerobic respiration, 38 ATP. Good amount. Anaerobic respiration, the exact same thing, except... There's no oxygen. So this is only used when there's no oxygen available, or when we have anaerobic conditions. So, the final electron acceptor is never oxygen, because we don't have any. So the sulfate reducers use sulfate, the methane reducers use CO2 to accept that final electron, or the nitrate reducers use nitrate. Makes sense. So, it's not going to be oxygen. And since it's not oxygen, we're not going to get as much energy or as much hydrogen movement out to create our ATP. So this doesn't create as much energy. For every one glucose, we only get two ATP. Not 38, but two. But we do get biosynthesis. Do you remember what biosynthesis means? Biolysynthesis to create? The creation of macromolecules. So, therefore, anaerobic is less efficient, and it creates lactic acid as a byproduct, but we do get biosynthesis and some energy from it. So, biosynthesis, it has happened occurring during the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle stages. So, we get 
lipids formed, we get amino acids created, we get nucleic acids created, and these guys are the breaking down of the carbohydrates. What does that mean? That means between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, we create glycerol and fatty acids, which create our lipids. And we also, during the Krebs cycle, we get the formation of amino acids. Now remember, amino acids can be um, created through other ways, but we also get them through the Krebs cycle. This is an overall thing of what we see during biosynthesis. So, we have our carbohydrates, we get our nucleic acids, or our nucleotides, we get our carbohydrates broken down, we get our lipids created, we get a lot of amino acids over here created, we get a lot of amino acids over here created, so, we get a lot of macromolecules. So, overall, anaerobic respiration, exact same, goes through glycolysis, goes through the Krebs cycle, goes through the electron transport chain, but... Oxygen is not the terminal electron acceptor, therefore it cannot make as much energy. So, two ATP and one glucose. And actually, that's all I have for you for right now. We will go on and learn about uh, fermentation and the Calvin cycle next time. Have a good night.